running 6S LiPos on 4S motors. Has he lost his mind? I mean, we switch our props all the time uh, to get different characteristics. Some people will even switch motors to change up characteristics. Why don't we do that with LiPos? You can now do that with your LiPo. Everyone needs to take advantage of this. Basically, motor output limiting is your friend. So I've got 6S on 4S motors and I've got them limited to uh, 28, I mean 1850 kV. And I put a Hero 8 on here and now I'm doing 6S freestyle. If you want to go, you know, balls to the wall and race, take your GoPro off, put a 6S pack and limit these bad boys to 1950 kV if you want. do freestyle but you need more efficiency and more power 6s and then bring the voltage down to 1850 or 1800 kV if you've got a session on there 1750 kV <laughs> You know, you can do it all with one quad. If you've been wanting to try 6S, there's really no excuse. You don't have to change your motors and, you know, spend all that money. You just need literally one 6S pack and go into the goggles. You don't even need to open the configurator. Go into the goggles and divide the KV you're at by the KV you want. And that's the percent that you, you type in. Okay, so I have these 5S 2200 KV TOAs that I'm going to be the TOA lights that I'm testing for the channel. I'm just going to show you how to do it real quick. So I said it backwards earlier. You want to take the KV that you want. So for this one, I want to be at 1850 KV. And then you want to divide by the KV that you're at. So 2200 KV is this motor and you get 84%. So now what you do, go into your OSD menu, then you go profile, miscellaneous, I believe. Yeah, there it is, motor output limiting. So right now it's on 70. I want to go to, what was it, 84? Let me double check, yeah, 84. Looks like my goggles are shutting down. So then you go back, save. I like to save and reboot, but you don't have to. And that's it. Now these 2200 kV motors are 1850s. All right, let me go ahead and shut this down and get back to the video. So boom, done. Now you're rocking a 6S setup. And of course I, I tested things like I uh, threw a 4S and a 6S uh, motor of the same kind, you know, to test if there's any difference. And there was about five seconds of flight time difference. That's it. They felt exactly the same. There was no noticeable difference and there's no downside. So it's made things a hell of a lot easier. And it's not only done that, but it's kind of opened my eyes to, okay, well, these quads are a lot more versatile than I thought. I can do a lot more with one quad than I than I thought I could do. I could freestyle, I can race, I can do cine whoop stuff all with this one quad. I highly recommend everybody do that. I mean, I highly recommend 20 by 20 electronics. Look at this. This is my whole stack, VTX, ESC, and uh, flight controller. And you know how much less this weighs than a 30 by 30 stack? It's insane. Never burnt one, never pop one from, you know, flying and oops, I gave too much throttle. No, it's never happened. I have burned some of these ESCs, but they're usually in crashes or, and, and not only that, but I've burned way less of these uh, AK32 pins than I have burned any other ESC. So Hobby Wing is the worst for me. 
I went through like 10 of those in, in a few months, never again. Um, then the second worst would be Speedix. Uh, they're just horrible. <laughs> The uh, Hollybro ones, the Teco 32 or whatever they're called, those are good, but Akon's my favorite. The 30 by 30 Akon's I had, the AK-32s were just unbeatable. I flew the same one for a year. And then the AK-32 pin is also the greatest. The Speedix 20 by 20s are just trash. Don't buy those. Um, Hobby Wing is even worse, so. And I just say that from personal experience. I have nothing against those companies, but if they made good ESCs, I would be rocking them. So this is my stack. So it, why wouldn't you want to use a smaller, lighter <laughs> stack? You know, there's no downside. That brain flight controller is the business. And not to mention everything is tucked away. I can't, so let me show you on this one. It's a little bit easier to see. I can't, you can't hit the stack. You can't damage it when you're flying. The ESC, nothing's sticking out. Let me show you on this one. Nothing is sticking out. If you crash, you're not gonna uh, break anything on the sides, on the back, anywhere. It's all tucked away and uh, super clean. So it looks good and it, it's protected. And that's a big thing for me when I was, I wish I would have done this earlier because I used to crash a lot and the ESC would be the first thing to explode. And it opened it up a bit so you can see. Okay guys, so this is how I have my electronics set up. So in the middle is the Akon sitting like that. As you can see, all the motor wires are kind of safely tucked away in the center of the quad. Now it makes it a pain to swap motors. That's why on this one, I, I use race wire on the other quad, but it does protect them. So if you, uh, you know, crash or if you get stuck in a tree or if you're in some bushes or something, the chances of you shorting these or one of them ripping off or something is really slim. So ESC in the middle sideways, and this is the controversial part but this is also the part that um, I think gives me the most benefit. So I have the flight controller on the bottom in the back with the VTX on top of it. Now, if you're one of those people that's gonna say, wait a second, you can't put the flight controller in the back, it has to be in the middle. No, you don't. And I'm not gonna explain to you why that is, but you don't. So I have it mounted flush against the bottom plate and I originally I did this out of necessity because I kind of didn't have anywhere else to mount it and I noticed that the quads that I had done this on which is this one and the other one that you saw earlier they sounded different and they flew really smooth with little amounts of prop wash. Hyper smooth is off zero prop wash on this setup test one <laughs> Now they have all the same components, but different motors. And so it's not the motors, it's, it's pretty much this. I know this is what is making them sound like that. Why it's doing that, I have a theory, but I'm not sure. So I have them basically, the Apex comes with those metal screws. You can see I have one, two, three, four in here. And they're, they have these bottoms that, let me take one off, they kind of look like this. They are actually exactly like this, but they're metal, right? So I have it set up like this. The metal thing is in there. It doesn't even, won't even fit in there, but it barely fits. So I guess they're slimmer than this because this won't even fit. It won't fit in there. So I have the gummy in and then this is in that, not this skinny ass uh, piece, but the actual bottom of the standoff and that holds it in. You don't even need to uh, screw it down after that, but I do because I need to put the VTX on top. But the way that it's in like that, I think has something to do with it and the mounting, the way I mounted it. And also I think that the way that it's uh, up against the bottom plate like that has something to do with it. And I think what it's doing is, so if you know anything about filtering, um, 
So the notch filters or dynamic filters, for example, in Betaflight, they try and find problematic frequencies and suppress them, right? And sometimes they can have trouble doing that if those frequencies are too small or there's competing frequencies because they only have so many bands that they uh, will notch, well, that, that they'll suppress. So I think that doing it like this, maybe it's just on the apex, I don't know, it brings up those it kind of actually <laughs> makes the quad worse to make it better so it amplifies some of those problematic frequencies and then the notch filter can easily find them and suppress them and that or it just causes the the filters to work a little bit harder so i don't know exactly how the rpm filter works but it could just cause the rpm filter to work harder although i think it is the uh the other thing so i don't know that could be complete bull but i think it because i know it is making a difference you can hear it the and the quads do fly smoother they fly better after taking a hit but i think that i don't know exactly why if anyone knows let me know or if you have any ideas let me know Anyway, guys, that's it. I just wanted to uh, share that with you because it's one of the questions I get asked the most. It's uh, one of the things that frustrates me the most when I see people that want to switch to 4S and they don't and I explain it to them and they're like, that can't be possible. How can that be? It's a thing. So please do it. Um, at least test it out and thank me later. I have a Discord now. Uh, patrons get exclusive access to the patron-only channel. That's all on patreon.com slash maxbeamer. Check it out. And uh, also giveaways start next week. So we have monthly giveaways. Last month I gave away like uh, $500, $450 worth of prizes. So this month is going to be a similar situation. Motors, frames, complete BNFs, all that stuff. Check it out, guys. Link in the description. All the parts in the description. Peace. See you on the next one.